and welcome back to Dark Matter. I'm Dominique. And I'm Avalon. And today I'm going to be telling you guys about the Dyatlov Pass mystery. And Avalon, you don't know anything about this. You're going to be hearing it for the first time today too, right? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it. You've been telling me for a while and I'm so ready. <laughs> yes, me too. So I actually heard about this for the first time on Mile Higher podcast last year. And funny story, I was listening to this during a drive back from Las Vegas and it was already dark. So it was not a great idea because I was already being very creeped out. And as I was researching this, I got even more creeped out. So this should be fun. <laughs> and like, I'm just completely baffled by the story and I like I don't even have any guesses as to what actually happened and I think Avalon you and our listeners are going to be totally confused too so we'll Perfect. get right I'm into it. I'm so ready. Yes <laughs> and I just want to say that this is nowhere near all things about this case there are so many details and we couldn't possibly cover it here so if you guys really want like a more overview of the big points and um you know, like, I'm just covering, like, the basic details, so if you want to look more into it, we will definitely leave links on our sources on our website underneath this episode. For sure. All right, and I just want to start by warning that this these details are a little gruesome, and it just can't be done without because it's the nature of the case. So right. just a little warning if you guys are a little queasy or whatever, just a heads up, something to think about if you want to listen to this. So, the Dyatlov Pass incident refers to the mysterious deaths of nine hikers in Russia, formerly the Soviet Union, and it took place in 1959. So, the story goes that in early February, a group of graduate students from the Ural Polytechnic Institute decided to go on a ski expedition to the North Ural Mountains, which was expected to take about three weeks. And the group was led by Igor Dyatlov, who the pass is actually named after because of this incident, which, by the way, is a really unfortunate way to get something yeah, named after that's yourself. Bad. Um, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> so the group originally consisted of nine other people. It's seven men and two women, including. And please forgive me. I'm trying my best to oh, say Russian the names, but they're names all really in. Hard. Yeah, yeah, they're all in Russian, and I'll probably butcher them. So sorry in advance. So the group included Yuri Doroshenko. Ludmila Dubinina, Alexander Kolvatov, Sineda Kolmogorova, Yuri Krivonoshenko, Rustam Slobodin, Nikolay Thibo Brignol, Semyon Zolotaryov, and Yuri Yudin. So there was three Yuris. Just the there, there are clear. three Yuris. Okay. Yes, apparently just that's a very popular that out Russian out name. Of the yes. way, yeah, it's kind of. I'm sure it's like John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the group's goal was to reach the top of our a Torton Mountain, and they were doing this in sort in order to re receive a higher hiking certificate. So they were already pretty qualified, and they were doing this to reach a, another qualification. Okay. And so the route that they were taking was labeled Category Three, which is considered to be the most difficult. You know, especially with the weather, since it's winter and it's snowing. You know, it can be yeah. rather treacherous. And. But all the members, you know, they were pretty competent. Like I said, they had previous experience with long ski tours as well as mountain expeditions. So it's not as if, you know, they were just a bunch of unprepared college students who decided like, oh, we're just going to go on a hike one day, you know, right. like they really knew what they were doing. Yeah. So on January 27th, 1959, the group left the little town of Vizhe, which they traveled to the day before. And Vizhe was kind of like the last inhabited town that was close to the Ural Mountains. And since, you know, they're so far north and their trek towards a Torton started. But the next day, one of the, uh, one of the group, one of the Yuris, Yuri Yudin, became ill and he was forced to go back. And he had no idea what was about to happen to his friends, you know? Yeah. And so uh, on February 1st, the remaining members of the group began their little hike a little later in the day that they planned to. And they only managed to travel about four kilometers, which is 2.5 miles. Mm -hmm. um, before they set up camp around 5 p.m. on the slope of Kol Kolatsyakol. I, I totally butchered that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it was actually called the Mountain of the Dead by the local Mansi tribe. And that was due to nine hunters dying there before. So, you know, already not a great sign. It was nine before? Yeah. Funny, right? That's not, eerie. Not funny. Yeah, it's eerie. weird. Yeah, so it was already considered, like, Mountain of the Dead. They already had bad juju vibes yeah i don't know if i was in a group of nine and i'm going at this and they're like oh it's called the mountain of the dead and we have nine people as well. i would be like hmm, yeah you're like all right peace not out worth it the the certification not worth it no, i'll do that next time me. yeah some other mountain maybe yeah 
<laughs> so what happened during the evening of February 1st and the 2nd, no one really knows about. So we kind of just have to speculate what happened. All right. And it was expected that Dialov and the others would be in contact no later than February 12th, but when February 12th passed and no word came, people didn't really worry, you know, like, they're hiking, it can be dangerous, like, delays are pretty common, especially, you know, with, like, the rough weather and stuff. Yeah. So, but on February 20th, with still no word from the groups, relatives of the students became concerned, you know, and they demanded a rescue operation. And the first rescue groups consisted of volunteer students and teachers with police and army forces joining later on, and eventually planes and helicopters were added to the search. So on February 26th, researchers found, or searchers found the tent damaged and abandoned. Mikhail Shavarin, the student who found the tent, said, quote, the tent was half torn down and covered with snow. It was empty and all the group's belongings and shoes had all been left behind, end quote. All of the, wait, the girls' belongings and shoes or everybody? All, all the group. All of the whole group's belongings, like mm-hmm. outer clothes, like shoes and everything. And remember. So they were naked somewhere. It's not like thinking. fully naked, but like it, it's snowing, you know, like yeah, it's cold. Yeah, why would you take your shoes off or your jacket exactly. in Russia so, in the winter? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, didn't, I wouldn't do that if I were them. But yeah. so already, you know, like. Even without any of the people found, this is already looking to be a little Like, they're dead, weird. pretty much. That's what I would be thinking. I'm like, well, they're in Russia. They don't have shoes mm-hmm. on. They're in the mountains. Like, sorry to break it to you, but right. go on, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, investigators found that the tent had been cut open from the inside and that the group had either fled in their socks or, again, barefoot. So, it had been cut open with a knife from the inside. From, so, somebody in, like presumably one of them in the the tent yeah cut that, themselves out of the tent and yeah, then they that, fled the scene that's what they're thinking because i mean how else would you know how would it get open from the inside right so on march 3rd when all the things were found in the tent were cataloged it was concluded that the group left without their outer clothes like jackets hats gloves and shoes like i said and that's when everyone kind of gets confused, you know? Like, why would a group of nine young, physically fit students suddenly abandon their tent in the middle of the mid- winter without jackets where it's yeah. practically freezing? So, yeah, very eerie already. And unfortunately, on February 27th, the bodies of Yuri Doroshenko, Yuri Kr- Krivonoshenko, Igor Dyatlov, and Zineda Kolmogorova were found. And around 11 a.m., about 1.5 kilometers away from the tent, the bodies of Yuri Doroshenko and Yuri Krivoshenko were found under a cedar tree under the ruins of the fire. So, Yuri Doroshenko, his body was found frozen with his hand burned, his ears, lips, and nose covered in blood, and he also had bruises and abrasions all over his hands and arms. Wait, but his hand was burnt? Like from, It was burnt. From heat. Yeah, so... Apparently, there were, like, uh, the remains of a fire near the cedar tree. So, they were thinking maybe, I don't know, they got cold. They tried to build a fire somehow. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yes. And the official cause of death for him was labeled hypothermia. And then Yuri Krivotoshenko was also found frozen. And injuries include torn skin on the backs of his hands, blood between his fingers, and a torn index finger and a bloody shin. Again, cause of death is hypothermia. That's so odd. I don't know. I guess I'm, like, just putting together, like, fire, but they died from hypothermia. Yes. Like, obviously that makes sense that, like, just the fire's contained. But I guess that was just, like, weird. Because I know that sometimes, like, when you get, um, like, frostbite, it can affect your skin the way yes. it burn would. Mm-hmm. But that's just crazy that it's, like, you know, like, it's kind of weird that they, like, were, they had this fire, but then they died from hypothermia. I guess that makes sense, but please go on. Right. I still, I'm just like piecing <laughs> it together with like half of the knowledge. No, I understand. That's totally yeah. it. Like it's already super confusing and we haven't even gotten to the weirdest part yet. Mm-hmm. So I think there was evidence that they had tried to climb up the cedar tree and I think that's where most of the um, torn skin they, they think came from. They climb up it? Climb up the tree, yes. Like cartoon style like, <laughs> like that's crazy. i guess so yeah that's the thing like i can't imagine that's why it's so like weird you're running from something yeah it kind of seems that way doesn't it yeah and oh, well that makes sense why they would be all torn up though yeah yeah because it kind of seems like a fight and so igor dyatlov who was their leader 
He was found the same day approximately 300 miles from the cedar tree. He had minor abrasions on his face and his right hand showed injuries that are common in hand-to-hand -hand fights. So again, more evidence of fighting or like an altercation that occurred. But again, his death was labored, labeled hypothermia. And then the other body found that day was of Zineda Kolmogorova. She was found about 630 miles from the cedar tree, and she also had abrasions on her hands and face, frostbite on her fingers, and she also had a long bruise on the right side that looks like it was left by something like a baton or some type of weapon close to that. Wait, how far was she from the cedar tree? She was about 630 miles. 600 miles? Yeah, so uh, pretty far. How could she be that far? I don't know. And Igor Dyatlov was quite a ways away. Like, I think Krivonoshenko and Doroshenko were found relatively close to the tree, but Dyatlov was found 300 miles and Kolmogorova was found 600 miles. And this was in the span of, like, I'm just thinking, like, the timeline. Like, how did they have the time to get that far away? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, they... I think people thought that this had occurred somewhere on between February 1st and February 2nd. The day they were discovered was February 27th. Oh, so they had a month that they were up there. Oh, yes. I wasn't thinking about that because they were expecting them back on the 12th. Yes. And then they didn't even find them until the 27th. Mm -hmm, yeah. So they had just been rough in it for for who knows how long. Well, we, that's the thing. We don't even know like when like, exactly happened, they died. Yeah, what why, happened. Who they were fighting. Yeah, if there even was a fight again, like we don't yeah. even know. And so their bodies were found and they were autopsied and her cause of death was the only one that was different from, actually, no, it was kind of the same. It was hypothermia due to a violent accident, accident, however, which is How slightly different. Uh, I mean, like, what does that even mean? Because hypothermia isn't, that, that's like freezing to death, right? Yes. So like, how can you freeze to death because of a violent accident? You know what I'm saying? Like, was she losing like blood? No, because that's like a different, that's bleeding to death. So like, yeah. what does that even mean? So I'm not sure about this too. I had wondered. I'm assuming that they think that she died at, because of hypothermia, but what led to it is because maybe she had been assaulted or again, had some kind of accident, you know? So just to get it clear, everyone they found so far, they all seem to have like had a fight of some sort but they're in like completely different areas now yeah so the two i think were found similarly in the same area the other two were a little further away and yeah again they all had kind of like injuries on their like on themselves i don't know like what the conclusion everyone's drawing right now but again it does seem to lead to like some sort of physical altercation because yeah. they all had injuries they all sustained injuries of some right. sort so it wasn't until March 5th that the body of Rustem Slobodin was found, and he had abrasions on his face, injuries on both hands common in a fight, torn skin from his right arm, as well as fractures on the side of his skull, which um, investigators found to be unusual because usually they say, like, um, head injuries would occur to the back of the head, but there was nothing on the back of the head, only the side. Oh, they're saying, like, if someone was trying to hurt someone, usually they come from behind them. Is that right. kind of what's, like, the idea? But this was from the side of his head. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Weird. Yeah, I don't know if they're thinking it was either he had been attacked or maybe he had, like, fallen and slipped yeah. and hit something on his head, you know? That seems more like a fall because it's, like, then right. you would fall on your side. But, like, who knows? Yeah, again. And his cause of death was labeled, also labeled hypothermia. So... Another strange thing about this case is that Doroshenko, Kolmogorova, Slobodin all had liver mortis spots that were not consistent with the positions they were found in, which means that it's possible that the bodies may have been moved after death. What? So there was, so like the way that they were found was like, that's not how they died, basically. They're saying like they were, they were moved after rigor mortis set in. Was that kind of like what they decided? That's what they're saying. That's what the evidence is pointing to because, you know, like liver mortis, I don't know how long it takes to set in. I'm not an expert on that, yeah. but I would say like a good while for like it to set in and then someone had moved them if the, the spots don't match. And, but this is true of all of them or all uh, the three that you just said. Yes. All the three that were, um, found had liver mortis spots that is so odd like it was somebody else or something yeah that's the thing it's like we don't know for sure and so search efforts continued for about two months but there were no sign of the rest of the four hikers 
In May, the snow started melting and a Mansi native cut some branches or found some cut branches that formed a sort of trail and the area had been previously searched by an avalanche probe, but the snow had been too deep. However, the bodies, the remain, the bodies of the remaining four members of the group were found on May 5th in a den made by them. And this is where it gets even weirder. So all bodies showed significant damage to their bones and it seemed as if they had been crushed with immense force, which doctors compared to being hit by a car. It also looks like clothing had been taken from the bodies of the others that were found under the cedar branches, which is not that weird because, you know, you're freezing, you can only think, like, my if they were together, like, my friends are already dead, like, but I can use this to keep warm. Right. However, the really weird thing is that the clothes were found hanging on branches, and it hadn't seen that they had been used for warm. So somebody, like, took them off of the body and put them on the tree. Yeah, well, one theory that someone proposed is, I don't know if you ever heard this, it's the paradox undressing theory. No. So apparently, um, people, or some people say that when you get hypothermia, your body actually starts to feel warm. So it's Mm -hmm. theorized that maybe they had used the clothes, but then they started feeling like hot even though they were freezing, and that's why they took off their clothes. Oh, I thought you were going to say the thing where people say you're supposed to, like, huddle for warmth and be naked, and then you're <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. No, I haven't heard of that one. That's crazy. So it starts to feel warm at some point. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, maybe your body just, like, can't deal with a cold, yeah. and it, like, tries to convince that you sense. that you're warm. Yeah. That's crazy. Wait, so just to, like, get this in my mind, so the last four that were missing, they didn't find them till May. Yeah, so it had been a little while after the others had been found after they were yes. missing and they were all in a, a cave uh i don't know if it was a cave it was like a den of some sort that they had huddled i think again for to try to find warm right. and and you said that they have been hit with the force of like a car yeah it's that's what the doctors prescribed it like they had sustained injuries that were i don't know they just like said they were equivalent. crushed with yeah they were like, crushed so with all immense of the, force all four of them were crushed yes what even is this? I'm like really yeah. talking about this because it's like if it was a bear, that's the first thing that came to mind. I'm like right. they're in a den, like a bear, but like the bear's not gonna take their clothes off. Like yeah. you know what I mean? And the bear would also not just like a, a bear's. You know, it's just an animal. It's just trying to eat. You know, mm-hmm. or if it's threatened, it's trying to protect itself. But like I'm assuming it would probably eat them. It wouldn't yeah. just. You know what I mean? Like why would it crush them? They're not sadists. Bears are just animals. <laughs> they're not trying to crush you and then leave. Like they would eat it. Well, wait till you hear what other injuries they sustain and tell me what you think then. Okay. So, one of the girls, Ludmilla Dumanina, was found with the soft tissue in her face badly damaged and her eyes were missing. Oh. Her tongue, yes, again, very gruesome details on this one. Um, her tongue was also found to be missing as well as several broken ribs and her cause of death was hemorrhage of her heart fractured ribs, and internal bleeding. And this, possibly the strangest thing of all yet is after her clothes were tested, some of them were found to be radioactive. What? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. So her eyes were missing. Her, her tongue, tongue was, was missing. missing. She had been bleeding inside. Mm-hmm. And her clothes had radioactive material on them? Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know if it was a lot or if it was a little bit, but... And they had at least some type of radioactiveness on them. And this was in 59, right? Yes. I'm just, like, trying to think of, I'm like, uranium, Chernobyl? Yes, every, that's like, what this was everyone's far thinking, before yeah. Chernobyl happened, or, well, the, the meltdown. But I don't, I'm assuming, like, uranium and, like, the, yeah. like, um, nuclear power was, I know that it was, like, becoming maybe more popular back then. Right, I don't know, right. I'm not a historian, I'm not a physicist, I don't know about any of this, but... I'm just trying to think, like, what was going on? Because I know that that was probably, like, a contentious time with, like... Because, you know, we've always been, like... Like, the, there's been, like, that back and forth with Russia with, yeah. like, the threat of nuclear war and whatnot. And so I'm thinking, like... But I felt like that was more, like, a little bit after that, towards, like, the 80s, the Cold War. Right, yes. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm thinking, like, what the hell? Like, they're mm-hmm. they're all crushed to death, but, like, her... Well, well, was anybody else's clothes radioactive or just her? Well, so... Uh, what are the guys? Let me tell you about all of them. Okay, yeah. So Semyon Zolotaryov, his eyeballs were also missing, as well as an open wound to the right side of his skull, and around his neck they found a camera, and that's what's also kind of puzzling because it's like, 
what was so important that he brought the camera along when they it seemed that they had just fled their tent yeah you know like he was planning on like just surviving and he brought his camera with him yes but unfortunately the film was too badly damaged and he was reportedly holding a pen and a notepad in his hands when he was found however the notepad like is unknown and was never filed into evidence so Mm. that's not really collaborated yeah (laughs) so that's what some the person who found him said but again that can't be corroborated and alexander kolvatov was found with a broken nose a open wound behind his neck, a deformed, or, uh, sorry, open wound behind his ear, a deformed neck, as well as some of his clothes were also tested as radioactive. And the last one, Nikolay Thibault Brignol, was also found with multiple skull fractures. So those are all the four that were found well, in that he day. he got off easy. He did, right? Compared like, to the rest so of them. So two of them lost their eyes. One lost their eyes and her tongue. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the other ones all have some kind of, like, really awful, like, wounds. Yeah. Like, open wounds. And I think um, some people, you know, like, everyone's thinking, like, what could possibly have happened? And I think um, probably a thought that popped into people's head were, like, scavengers. You know, like, birds or something will come and take, like, oh, soft that's tissue. True. But Okay, yeah. Again, like, the tongue, though, like, inside your mouth, like, anything else but the tongue, I feel like, would be the first yeah. option if That's that had happened. That's very true that, like, why would an animal go straight for the tongue? Like, I mean, I don't I don't know what animals are thinking. I don't know right. what kind of animals would be there. So, like, there's really no telling, but it's, it's It seems very specific. Like, yeah, because I almost started thinking, I'm like, if it's radioactive and they have all these wounds, like were they like dying of radioactive you know what i mean mm-hmm. like some kind of like poisoning but then i'm like you know they were crushed to death that's the, you don't get crushed to death by nothing yeah so that's the thing that i really don't get the fact that they were crushed because what kind of animal again animals aren't sadist people they're not tr- <laughs> they're not evil you know they're just trying to survive so if they were especially in the dead of winter in russia like if an animal found food a human body that's a lot of food they're not going to just leave it there you know exactly. I know that sounds morbid but like as an animal you know what I mean like they're not going to just leave this huge like four people actually yeah they're like they left their body food. like especially if it's like a mom bear and her babies or something I don't know maybe they're hibernating during that time I don't know anything but I'm just saying that like if it was animals it seems very odd that they would just kill them and dip and not even eat them yeah, I would feel like if it were scavengers, there would be way more damage to the rest of their bodies, you know? Yeah, and like, yeah, and, and also animals don't really like, at least from like most animals I could think of, don't really like crush. Usually mm-hmm. animals, except for like maybe like an onic- anaconda, like a, a right. snake that would wrap around you, but there are no I'm anacondas gonna, here. Yeah, go out on a limb and say there's none of those in Russia. So I'm thinking that like any animal that would attack them would be more of like, like they would like bite them like a mm-hmm. wolf or like a, a bear where they would like yeah there would be them, more like, bite marks go out with like, like the claws and biting them yeah and they wouldn't get their eyes out either like imagine like a bear like their paws like the size of mm-hmm. our head you know what i mean like i don't i just feel like it's just very odd and very specific it is to where it's like i'm like okay it has to be a person if they took their eyes out or something like that some kind of see only humans can be that sadistic so i'm like must have been some like crazy person but then the force of a car i'm not i'm like did he line each of them up and hit them with his car like no and it seems like it's a a rural area or like the middle of very rural yeah so i i think it's it's just like i'm so puzzled right now usually i have some kind of like it this isn't as easy as like a like a mis or like a murder like, mystery yeah, yeah, where I'm like, oh, it was the husband. Yeah, like, yeah. The case closed. You know what I mean? Like, this is like, I really have no clue. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the thing too. It's like I feel like a bunch of people could put up a bunch of theories, but none of them ever really work because there's yeah. just something that kind of contradicts. Yeah, there's those always theories. something that it's like, well, why they do this with the clothes? Why yeah. is their eyes gone? And we'll dive into that later because, girl, there are some crazy theories, I as love I'm the sure theories. you know. Yeah, because yes. some people have. <laughs> too much time on their hands aka us yes and they think of (laughs) theories for these things and i love to read them but go on okay so on may 28th of 1959 the russian government officially declared the case closed and concluded that the reason for their deaths were quote overwhelming force which the hikers were not able to overcome end quote which like uh, Wait, how many years after was this? No, not years. Um, the last of the bodies were found in May, and on May, on May fifth, I think, and on May twenty eighth. 
oh is God, when so they not closed even it. a month later. Yeah, no, not even a month. It was oh, very that is short. So suspicious. And what the hell is that <laughs> ruling? Oh, they were they uh, were killed by overwhelming force. force. Yes. So what was it that like, exactly? What, what like what do you mean? Force? Yeah, exactly. What is that even? Because it's not even like oh they succumb to the elements. Like at least that would be like okay that kind of makes sense. Yeah. But like overwhelming force, like that just makes it even more suspicious. Yes. Like what are supposed people supposed to do? Just be like okay yeah case closed. What if that thing or person or whatever it is is still out there? Yeah. I'm assuming it is right. So like why wouldn't they want to look into that? Yeah. Well that's the thing again like. People are, like, going crazy, like, trying to guess, like, oh, maybe, like, the Russian government is covering something up. Like, that's why yeah. they decided to close it so quickly. And so, yeah, you know, there are a bunch of theories, and it kind of just doesn't make sense, you know? Like, the way they were found, like, they were separated. It's like, if they were being chased by something, why were they separated? Like, part of the group was found here near the tree, as other were found miles away. It's super far away. That's yeah. the thing that really got me thinking was that, like, of course, like you mentioned, they had a month to get away. And, like, in a month, especially as a skilled, very skilled hiker, right. you could get very far. But it's just crazy to me that, like, they were that far away, hundreds of miles away. And then the weirdest thing is that although they were hundreds of miles away, they all had injuries, like, from some kind of fight. Yeah. And so I'm like, did they get into a fight and then have the time to get hundreds of miles away? Right. Or did they get, or they did something attack them individually? Yeah. That's well, what came to my mind. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like we again, we don't even really know what happened. Like, yeah, because they might have not. Well, I mean, like, I guess you could write it off as like, well, what would be in both of the areas that they were in that somebody would fight again animals? Like, if yeah. it was a big animal, they got in a fight. So and so, like, you can say like, you know, yeah. they're fighting for their life with this animal, and that would make sense that you know there's gonna be bears and wolves and whatnot in both areas. Mm -hmm. Like that makes sense. But there's just so many other things that yeah. don't make sense. And also the fact that they ripped themselves out of the tent. Yeah, again, like, you are in shelter. You have shelter. Like, what would make you run away from that? Again, without your shoes, without your jackets, while it's freezing cold yeah, in the middle of winter. you're in the tent, too. That's the thing I just really don't get. I'm like, did one of them go rogue? Because why would you rip yourself? Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've been camping a few times. There's usually, like, a some kind of zipper or some kind of like you know what i mean like how'd you get in the tent like there's probably a way to open it so the right. fact that he like or whoever did it ripped their way out of it seems very um like frantic to me like something yeah, like was they, in there with them they like, literally like, took a knife and like slashed their way through the tent yeah. and again like there are a bunch of theories as to what happened to the hikers and they range from you know probable to completely ridiculous to so. aliens <laughs> that's basically what it always ends in right basically yeah like okay so I'll start off with the ones most likely to happen. Okay. So they had a stove in the tent and not a stove for like cooking type of thing. Like stove is in like, um, they had used it to, um, as a source of heat to keep warm. Okay. So one theory is that the stove made the tent somehow catch on fire or maybe like it malfunctioned and there was an excess of smoke and they couldn't see. And that's why maybe mm -hmm. they panicked I mean, and they like slashed the tent to get out. So that's a plausible theory. However, one problem with that is if they did, you know, somehow catch on fire, why did they run so far from the tent? You know, like I would imagine they got their way out and they would try to either find a way to put the fire out or something. Like why run or so they're, far they're away? They're surrounded by snow. Like, yeah, I'm literally thinking, like, get some snow and dump and, it on the tent. Yeah, you're saying the snow was so deep that they couldn't even get into the area to find the body. So I'm thinking like, if you're surrounded by snow, like, as soon as you're out of the tent, you're good. You just need to, like, dive in the snow, right? That's true, yeah. So why, yeah, why would they just keep running and running? Mm-hmm. Or, like, if they were going for safety, why, again, why would they split up? Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm, like, because I know you're going to read the other ones, but the thing that came to my mind is, like, oh, cabin fever. Mm -hmm. But they're not in an isolated <laughs> place. That happens because I'm just, like, oh, it's cold, the shining. Right. You know what I mean? That's where my mind went, too. But, like, they're out in the open, you know, but maybe just the isolation made one of them go crazy. But that still does not even explain half of it. But, okay, go on. What is it? with the next one or the rest of that one yeah well it's funny you mention that because that's another theory like that i'll mention later the mm -hmm. other um plausible theory is again an altercation which makes sense they all have injuries yeah. some of them corroborate with a fight so it was either you know an altercation that they had with each other or perhaps someone else but 
my thing with that is again the four that were found in the den they were found with crushing force like i don't know any human or person who would have that kind of strength plus the fact that they took out their eyes and their tongue it kind of screams serial killer to me that's exactly my first thought when you said this the to- the eyes and the tongue and but it always comes back to the crushing force because i'm like maybe one person found the crushing force yeah maybe they succumbed to the elements maybe they felt like a rock fell on them or mm-hmm. i don't know like the, an avalanche or something but four people yeah in a den yeah an avalanche wouldn't make sense in that case so if there's four of them and they all were crushed like no person could even crush someone like that period even mm-hmm. one person that i could imagine let alone four people yeah. So that still doesn't make any sense. I mean, what you were saying with, like, maybe it was an outside person mm-hmm. that was getting an altercation with them makes a little bit more sense. Because I was thinking, too, I'm like, it wasn't just the guys that were found with, with wounds from, like, a, a like an altercation. Yeah, it was the two woman girls. was, too. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, like, just in my mind, I'm like, if the girls were a part of the fight, like something bad must have been happening. Yeah. Because I'm assuming those were all friends. They're mm-hmm. probably, like, you know, guys are guys and like i could imagine one of them getting in a fight but if they're hitting the women and the women are trying to defend themselves like something's going on so yeah. i feel like maybe if it was like an outsider that kind of makes more sense that was maybe like trying to rob them or something yeah but it's just there's still so much left yeah i know it's like again if it was one person i'm assuming one person you know like how could they take all these nine fit college students and yeah. you know and it's like Again, they were kind of running, but, like, again, what would cause them to run from their shelter? What would cause them to run and separate from each other? It's just, like, so many things that don't kind of click. As well as the fact that, like, again, they are in the mountains. Like, it is away from civilization. Like, I, unless a serial killer is somehow living secretly on the mountain, like, I don't understand how that could happen. That's a good point, too. I didn't even think about that. That, like, if somebody was out there, it's not, like you're in the middle of the city like that person must be committed to living in the mountains which is like possible i'm sure but like definitely plausible mm, i don't know about that yeah and again there's just that whole crushing force thing that i'm like i don't think that a person could do that yeah this would have taken like somebody who's committed to living off the grid and has a pack of like roughly 20 bears behind them like you know what i'm saying like there's just like nothing's adding up yeah, no, okay. And then the last plausible theory, or the last, I think, plausible theory is that they were somehow incapacitated. And the theory is that they were either incapacitated by drinking alcohol or were taking shrooms, which caused them to act in strange ways. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've never done shrooms, but I don't think that it could make me take off all my clothes in the middle of winter, run, and like, do crazy shit like that. Yeah, I mean, because, like, there's definitely stories of, like, people, you know, taking your, every Florida man title <laughs> is always something. Yeah. And, like, I know, like, obviously drugs can, like, especially psychoactive drugs can, like, cause you alter to Alter your that, perception. Yeah, yeah, like, you alter your perception and do things you usually wouldn't. And, but, like, usually with shrooms from, like, I haven't done that either. I'm not really interested in it. But from what I've heard, I actually, side note, had a professor who did guided shroom trips of course. so like that's where i got all my info from my professor um but yeah from what that professor said from people i know who have taken them it's more of like a relaxing thing like they've right. always said like it just makes them like really introspective and just kind of think about life like i've never heard of someone like flipping out and and going off on someone mm-hmm. and like wanting to hurt people on shrooms but maybe i'm wrong usually when i hear of things like that it's like pcp or meth right. or something like that where it's like more um chemical or like um artificial you know yeah but i mean i don't really know much about it but i'm just thinking that like even if they were drunk or especially if they're on a like you know mind altering drug i can't imagine that they would like there's just it's again it just doesn't add up there's just yeah. things that like the fact that they got so far you don't get 600 miles on one trip you know what i'm yeah. saying like if she like the person who was found that far away like they At were determined point, to go they were, there. Yeah, they would have not been, like, they were not high after some point, mm-hmm. and they were still going that way. Yeah. So they would have come back if, or at least tried to, right? You know what yeah. I mean? And I don't know. This just, like, it that makes sense, and that would definitely, like, maybe paired with something else that would make, like, like start mm-hmm. to put answers together. 
but it's still just not enough yeah like all the pieces just don't fit again that's the thing it's like no one can decide on one theory because no matter what theory you have it may work for some pieces but it doesn't work for the other pieces again yeah. the crushing force thing the eyes the tongue the eyes i don't and the tongue. yeah that's just not and i could see people being like oh this is what shrooms do this is what drugs do like i don't no, think so i don't really think it does definitely that. not yeah like yeah. that's that's not a th- thing that happens usually yeah and like again like the alcohol same thing with the alcohol thing apparently there was a flask of alcohol found but it was a weird thing you know russia and they're also graduates yeah they're they're college students and they're in the dead cold and they're going on a trip like what i would be i would be surprised if there was an alcohol (laughs) i would be like what are y'all doing yeah me too so like that doesn't surprise me at all and the thing was i don't think they found like an excess of alcohol again one flask for nine people i think they're mostly using it to keep warm you know alcohol that's what i was gonna say too yeah it's so cold that like i that's what i'm saying like i would want to take alcohol on a trip because Mm -hmm. like that because you want to stay warm and yeah yeah, if there's one flask for nine people you're not gonna get drunk off of that trust me they probably can handle their liquor like i can't imagine that would get them so intoxicated that they would end up dead yeah like unlikely exactly i yeah that's the thing again i there that's why i i honestly can't think of something usually i'm like oh i think this happened but i have no idea just, what happened because well, the thing is there's so many of them and they're found in such different situations yeah like, they all have things in common but like they also are some of them are very far from others mm-hmm. some of them had this crushing force somehow things taken out of them some didn't they each have some kind of like unique trait yeah and it just like nothing can tie it all together exactly except and for aliens i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well funny you mention that because now we're gonna get into the oh, yeah. fun get your tin foil hats on yes. guys we're going into the good one we're going in deep man <laughs> so as of course with any strange circumstance there is always the yeti theory that is pitched around <laughs> yeah no i mean like honestly when you started saying this all i'm like you thought it yeti <laughs> sounds like well i didn't think specifically yeti but like it sounds like some kind of supernatural yeti basically yeti yeah, yeah but i didn't think of it like the word till now but yeah it definitely sounded like some kind of creature that we we've never seen before right that i i'm not gonna lie i'm not superstitious but i'm a little I stitious, little stitious. <laughs> and i'll be honest my mind was like well maybe you know and so this theory kind of I guess it kind of came about mainly because of this grainy image found on one of the hikers cameras mm-hmm. and I want to take a look at this picture on the camera yeah so they had actually taken like journals and diaries and cameras so part of their thing was very well documented that's why they know that whatever happened happened on either February between February well, 1st and February 2nd yeah. yeah and so again tell me what you think of this picture oh God, I'm scared. this is our yeti <laughs> This was filmed on their camera. On their camera, but again, it's like, to me, that doesn't look like some creature. It looks like a... so scary. It is, but again, to me, it just looks like some strange figure wearing, like, a jacket, maybe a mask. But it's just, like, the way his arm is curved like that, like, oh, what is that? And it's like, he's, like, a hefty boy, like, he's big, you know what I mean? Like, that's... He oh does look God. strong, but I don't know if he's strong enough to cause crushing force to four but, people. But, like, think about that's far away. That, like, that's, that's true. not close to the camera. Because look at those trees. Like, mm-hmm. that's Compared at least a few that. feet away. So the fact that he's that big, that could be, like, an eight-foot-tall thing. Oh, God. You know, I didn't even think about it. That's true. And, and now I'm like, getting even more creepy. And, like, just the way his arm bends, like, that's not a person's arm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, yeah. like... Or if that is an arm. I don't know what it is, but it's, like... That that ain't, that dog don't hunt, and they <laughs> say in the south or wherever they say that like this something's like not right about that. Yeah, like it kind of gives you the chills, doesn't it? Yes, I'm so shocked by that, and that, so that was actually found on their camera because usually yes, when I see these, cameras. I'm like, yeah, okay, like you know, like the like the old what do you call old nest, like the Nessie creature, you know yes. what I'm talking about? In, in I think it's in Scotland. Um, it, we've all seen that picture, and like you know, it's you've seen ways that it's like debunked that the picture oh, yeah, is fake. For sure. Um, but this one, the fact that it was found on their cameras Mm -hmm. and they're dead now, you know what I mean? And so it's just like that couldn't really, I mean, it could be a person. Like it would be false to say it couldn't be a person, Yeah. but I'm just thinking like the way it's so shadowy and like the structure and like I said, the arm being bent all weird and like, he just seems like knee deep in the snow. I don't know. Just like the way it looks like that does not look like a person. You know what? 
What's funny? I didn't even notice the bent arm until you mentioned it to it's me, like and now I'm getting even more creeped it's out. It's creepy. Like, look at your arms. Don't do that. We That's got like true. joints there. Like, it goes one way. Like, it extends <laughs> or it goes down. It's real simple. Like, it does not do that. Yeah. So. And like, of course, as a let me just say this as a psychology major, I know that our minds see what we want to see. And you know, if I if I presented this picture to you and said there was nothing wrong with it, we would probably not even see that. Figure, right. You know, because yeah. it's like it's pretty friend center, but we would also probably be like, eh, it's just the lighting. Yeah. But yeah. like having this in our mind, obviously, I'm not trying to just like say, oh, this is undeniable proof and whatever. But it makes just, you think, right? It will just the thing that really is making me think is the fact that it was on their camera because it's yeah. not from some random person. It's not from, you know what I mean? And like, who knows? Maybe it was a joke they're playing and like yeah. one of them was dressed like that. I don't know how the hell they pulled that off. But you know what I mean? We don't know because they're dead, unfortunately. But yes. and I don't know. It just seems odd that they took a picture too because let's just go with the yeti theory right like let's just <laughs> if we're gonna believe just that. like throw caution to the wind and say yes it was a yeti the weird thing is they took this picture and i'm just thinking like was that the last few moments of that person's mm. life or was that yeti following them for a long time a good point because if you think about it the person who was found hundreds of miles away mm -hmm. was also killed yeah and not just hypothermia they were killed and so i'm thinking what if the yeti was stalking them for a while mm. and then so it was able to kill them and then follow the girl yeah maybe i mean again that's the thing like no one knows and we can only guess at stuff that you know yeah. what happened that night and so one theory is the yeti theory and i'll be honest i'm a little creeped out looking at it and guys will also put this in the episode notes if you guys want to take yeah, a look and definitely see what take you a think. look at yeah. it again of course there's you know we have these biases because we're already, we already know about the story and we're right. like, well, we're going to see what we want to see. I'm aware of that, but definitely just take a look at it. Um, yeah, it's see really what you guys creepy. Think. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth taking a, a look at and thinking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely creeped out. Yeah, it's very scary. I'm just thinking like, just because like the way it's taken is such like, it's, it's like, like it's really such a real in the angle. middle. Like it looks like you're looking into it. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So yeah, and it's right in the middle. And so I'm just thinking about like if I was the one taking that picture, and it's I just imagine like taking the picture, and then realizing when I'm taking a picture and you're like, of, oh, and being like, oh shit, I'm about to die. Like yeah, this like is... we better run. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so scary. Yeah. I'll it's... be honest, I wasn't creeped out looking at before, but now that you mentioned the bent arm thing, I'm yeah. a little creeped out. Because I'm like, what can he do with his body that we can't, <laughs> right? If he can, like, bend, or I say he, like, I give it a gender. If it can, like, bend its arm like that, like... What, can, what else can I do? Apparently crush humans to death. Like, oh my... Oh my god, that's so scary. That is <laughs> very creepy. And, like, honestly, I would never say this, but... Or I never thought I would say this, but, like... The Yeti seems like a pretty damn plausible <laughs> option right? at this point. Like, I'm like, yeah, pretty much that's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, like, I, if you had told me, like, that I would say, oh, it's the Yeti, or if I would ever believe it was, like, some supernatural creature, I'd be like, no, you're definitely crazy. But yeah. given the very strange circumstances, I think it's, it's just, a little understandable it's too if we. Much. Yeah. Because yeah. like, you guys have to understand, Dom and I are such skeptics. Like, we. Oh, anything, so skeptical. Anything you show us, we're like, give me the evidence, give me the empirical, give me the, like, you know, the um, peer edited or peer reviewed journals. Like, I don't want to just take it at face value. Yeah, I'm no, not going to sure. believe what you tell me. But this is just like, once you have something like this that's just like nothing's adding up, it's like. I, well, I guess I'm open to yeah. other... And well, this is, like, just really quick, circling back to how they had radioactive clothes. I'm just thinking, like, just using my rational brain, could the Yeti have been a product of, of you know, nuclear... Like, some kind oh. of, like... You know, because you know the people, like they'll say that like near, near Chernobyl like mm -hmm. animals are born with like whatever I think that most of the pictures I've seen that are supposedly like you know deers with six legs they're or whatever like photoshopped. they're all photoshopped yeah I've never seen like one that I thought was legitimate but I know that it does change our DNA oh yeah for sure and it it can alter things that's you know it makes mutations mm -hmm. so I'm just thinking like what if the Yeti was a person. Right, yeah. And I they mean, were mutated in some way. I'm just, I don't know. I've watched too much Little Rings. I'm thinking <laughs> like Smeagol kind of situation to Gollum. Yeah, I, right. I just, I don't know. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned the radioactive clothes because the next theory actually involves the KGB. Oh, and yes. so, yes. <laughs> so author of the book Love Pass, Alexei Rakuten, suggested that the theory, um, that Semyon Zolotaryov, Alexander Kolvatov, and Yurikuro Vashenko were actually KGB agents on a mission to uncover a cell of C 
CIA agents, and supposedly they were to deliver radioactive samples and take photos, but supposedly something went wrong and the CIA agents killed the group. So why were they in the group in the first place? In I don't know, game? like, uh, I, I guess it was like a reconnaissance, like, undercover mission, and they're all like, oh, we're going hiking, but really, we're gonna go do this. But what was the end goal, is my thing. Well, they said that, supposedly, to deliver radioactive samples and take photos of the CIA, but something went wrong. Interesting. I mean, that would explain the radioactivity. Yeah, um, that's true. That's the only theory that I've heard so far that even kind of touches on that. Yeah, and I feel like the KGB, whenever it comes back to the KGB, it's like, everything is very hush-hush about that. That's and like, true. you know, it's... So that, and it, it kind of makes sense. I'm just, the thing I'm thinking is like, what would they get from joining some college kids right. on their hike? Well, you I mean, know what like, I mean? Like, how would that help them deliver their, or, like, employ yeah. their mission? Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know. Like, I think people are just thinking, like, oh, you know, as soon as they see Radioactive again, I think it's like, oh, the government is hiding, like, some top-secret yeah. project. And I mean, it's I mean, hard not to think that yeah. when it's, like, radioactivity. Like, that doesn't just happen yeah. from being in the woods. That's, like, you know, that's man-made. So yeah, where's yeah, that coming sure. from? And, like... I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I don't put it past any government to try to cover up some sort of thing like that, but again, I just don't think that it fits. I feel like if it were some type of government thing, it would be a lot cleaner than it was. You know, again, they were kind of all over the place, different ways, different injuries, so... Yeah, and then why, I don't know. that still doesn't explain why they would take the damn eyeballs and the tongue out. Like, you know what I mean? I I don't know. I, I mean, that one thing that would explain, though, the KGB one, like, at this point, I'm like... It kind of explains things, kind of doesn't. Like, that one I'm, like, more on the fence about than the Yeti, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. But, um, with that It's funny, one, we actually believe the Yeti I know, story I'm more. Like, that one's, like, a little more plausible. I like, put it <laughs> that way, yeah. But the thing I'm thinking is that the fact that the, the government was so quick to be, like, eh, they died, sorry. Like, yeah, move sucks. on, let's oh, move well. on. Yeah, exactly. They just wanted to, like, close the case as soon as they found the new body, or the last bodies. Mm-hmm. It just kind of strikes me as, like, what are you trying to hide? Like, why did you want to close right, it so yeah. quick? Like, why are you, you know, if, like, everyone wants to know this is such a big mystery, like, but why are you like, oh, well, like, we don't know what happened, but that's okay. Yeah, and these were young, as you mentioned, young, healthy kids, very skilled hikers. So this isn't like they were elderly, they weren't young, they yeah, weren't Yeah, it sick. wasn't some accident where they just were being irresponsible, they didn't know what they were doing, no. they knew what they were doing. Yeah, and I hate that, too, that this happens a lot where people are like, oh, they were drunk, they were high, this or that, or they were this or that, and just kind of like you know, spit on the name of these people who died yeah. horribly. And I'm like, you don't know what happened. And even if they were drunk, like, well, they're dead now. So I have a little respect. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I feel like, true. I feel like a lot of times with these government cover-ups, they kind of like go back and smear the name of the, mm. of the poor victims. And we always forget like the victims are the ones that suffered the most. That's so true. Yeah. That's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. And their it? families, like I can't imagine how their families feel like, oh, yeah. something terrible happened to my loved one, but you're suggesting that it's their fault because they were somehow yeah, incompetent. Yeah, exactly. That's so insulting for them yeah that must be awful for the families i know so again like it's just kind of crazy like no one you know like the government seems suspicious like everything about this case is suspicious just everything to be honest. Is suspicious and yeah but now we're finally getting to your favorite theory the um aliens. the ufos <laughs> oh yes my God. so this theory Again, mainly stems from a photo- another photograph that was found on one of the hiker's cameras. And Avalon, do you want to describe what you're seeing in this okay, picture? Okay, let me describe it. So this was also on... This was also on one of the hiker's cameras, yes. Honestly, I don't even know what to call it. Okay, so it looks like it's like mostly black. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a little flare in the middle. And then there's just like a big white flare of light and so it looks like it's it was taken kind of um while the camera was moving yeah and it seems that like or something else was moving and it seems that like the the actual thing that's in the picture because you know it's like it's blur yeah but i think the main thing is this little like this white burst of light yeah um but it looks like in the background i'm seeing lines Mm -hmm. and so i'm thinking what is this? Is this, this isn't taken, I'm, th- this is what's coming to my mind. I don't think this is taken looking up because I see no stars and I'm mm. assuming if they're in the middle of nowhere, there's going to be stars, right? But this isn't taking, taken down because cameras have light and this is not snow. This is a black background. Yeah. So honestly, I don't know what to think of this image. When I first saw it, I was kind of like, it just kind of seems like maybe, um, Someone had was trying to take a picture, maybe accidentally knocked the camera over. You know, like when you knock a yeah. camera over, there's blurs and there's that kind of blur in the photo. But 
again, I don't know, like, some theories were, you know, like, maybe the camera was just malfunctioning, and that's where I would go. I wouldn't necessarily look at this and yeah, say, like, oh my god, like, when UFO. I saw it, yeah, because if it was, like, clearly the night sky, and that was in the middle of the sky, I hmm. would be like, okay, yeah, something's weird about that. But, like, yeah. just the angle it's taken at, it just reminds me so much of, like, if you took a picture, like you are saying, and it, like, the phone fell or something like that. Like, it just, in my mind, even after thinking about aliens, mm-hmm. like, that isn't the first thing that comes to my mind because it no, doesn't look, like, alien. You know what I mean? It just yeah. looks like, like, it just looks like a blur. But one thing that does strike me is that those lines that you mentioned, they kind of look, like, like staticky almost, right? Don't yeah, they? The, that, that's the only thing that really confused me were the lines in yeah. the background because they're they're very faint lines. It's not, like, a oh, super, are, yeah, sure. like, bright thing, but I don't know how to describe them. Like you said, kind of staticky, like, is is the theory, of, like, when people, like, look at this, do they think it's so, inside the ship or, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I think people are, again, like, thinking UFO, like, something glowing in the sky. Like, I didn't even consider the fact that you mentioned that there are no stars, which, yeah, that's true. Like, I'm assuming, like, it's pretty clear on top of a mountain. I'm assuming you can see stars. Yeah. But, um, so they, you know, think it's just this glowing orb in the sky. And to add on to that, there were also several geologists, apparently, approximately 70 kilometers from the mountains. And they claim to have seen some kind of glowing pulsating orbs flying towards um Colat Sikyal mountain on the evening of February 1st so I think that's again that's something very that odd. yeah that they said kind glowing of made them pulsating orbs yes which well, kind of I guess I mean if you look at this picture you would kind of describe I mean, it as like, like a glowing orb it's definitely a glowing orb and I guess like if you think about it pulsating and like rotating then that would explain the that's light that true, you're seeing yeah. but it's still just like I like I said that wasn't like the first thing that came to my mm-hmm. mind but maybe like I don't know that could be that could be so many different things but yeah, yeah. that's that the only thing is when you said aliens even though obviously I'm like okay aliens, <laughs> yeah whatever but like with aliens I think the first thing that came to my mind was because I'm still hung up on the fact that they were so far away yeah and that's that true. would make sense let's just say from what we've seen in movies whatever that they pick them up they in were their beamed ship up, or whatever, yeah. they were beamed up then and then they just like spit them out 600 (laughs) miles away right like that would at least make sense like that would give a reason for why they're so far away and i'm realizing how crazy it is now that i'm (laughs) actually like well it's like yeah yeah. because just this case is so weird that i'm like willing to take any answer i'm like yeah aliens like it's possible possible. Yeah. yeah but like I mean, it is possible, but, like, is it probable? I, I doubt it. Yeah. yeah and exactly. you guys, will also leave this in the episode notes on our website, so check it out, too. Tell us what you think. Again, I yeah. don't immediately think UFOs or aliens when I look at this, but that's just my opinion, so yeah. you guys, look at it and tell me what you think. Yeah, it's definitely not what came to my mind, but what do I know? I think definitely pay attention to those, like, lines in the background. Yeah, they're, they're very like, Tell us faint, what you think that is. Yeah, because yeah. it almost reminds me of, like, like thinking back to the radioactivity and like yes, how that might too. like screw with like a, a camera mm-hmm, you know what i mean yeah so um again like if the camera was malfunctioning because of some kind of like electronic pulse mm-hmm. or you know what i mean like i don't know it could be all kinds of things but i just think those lines in the background are very interesting and yeah. the, the fact that there's no stars because that's what's hanging me up on this i'm like there's no way they could have gotten a back a black background because yeah. there's a light in a the camera they have to have light so up stars down, down is ground. white yeah it's snow well and w- what else would be black you know what something just occurred to me it almost looks as if like it's far away it almost looks as if like you kind of have zoomed in on like a camera like really far away and it's like maybe they have movement coming towards them and that's why there's mm. that blur in the camera but again i don't know so maybe it's not pointed up maybe it's just pointed like far you know what i mean but again i I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you what I think this is. Like, I'm a photographer. Um, I've never seen anything like this, honestly. But again, um, it's dark. Who knows what happened to the camera? So it's anyone's guess, honestly. Yeah, it's just very weird. Definitely check it out. Yeah. So again, those are like all the crazy theories. But some new news actually happened pretty recently is that on February 29th, the 60-year case was reopened, and I read that they are actually are planning to go on an expedition to Dyatlov Pass, and they're 
um, planning on testing new theories about, you know, what happened that night. So who knows, maybe sometime soon we'll finally get some answers to this mystery. What, this was just last year? Yeah, this was just last year. This was pretty recent. Um, and I think, again, yeah, one of the main theories that was mentioned, which is something that you thought of too, was an avalanche, maybe. Yeah. But again, that, I don't... That explains the crushingness. Like, yeah, that's the force. Like, I know the force, like, of an avalanche is, is incredible, so mm-hmm. I know that could definitely crush them. Yeah, and, and it like, makes sense that they were buried in that den of snow, you know, if there oh, was Oh, okay, an if it was a den of snow, that makes sense. But I was thinking it's, like, a den... Well, yeah, because you said they, the snow was so deep they couldn't get to yeah. it. Yeah. So that would explain the crushing force. But not the eyes or the tongue. Not like, the eyes. an avalanche would not do that. Yeah, that still doesn't explain. So they see the everything. It's like whenever there's an explanation, there's like Something you can that, explain yeah. half of the group, but then the other half is not explained. Yeah, so I mean, it's crazy. But again, like, you know, they're investigating it right now. Who knows? Maybe even sometime this year we'll get an update and see what happened. Yeah, because if they just opened it up last year, like, we can check back for, um, yeah, for updates. Sure. That's really exciting. Yeah, that is. So, I mean, this has been, like, a mystery for six years, so maybe we'll finally figure it out. Maybe it's mm-hmm. going to be something crazy. Maybe it's not crazy at all. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, so, I mean, hopefully we'll see the conclusion of this mystery finally. Yeah, because that's, I mean, it's sad because, like, probably most of the family members have died off at this yeah. point because if they were already graduate students and now we're 60 years out, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. probably don't have many family members left, but it would still be some kind of, like, you know, closure, closure. To know and happened. also just, like, kind of cool for the people who are, like, oh, you know, my grandma died in the Diyalov mm-hmm. past, to yeah. be, like, oh, well, like, this is maybe what happened to her. Yeah, or, like, some, just some semblance of answers, because I think, like, you know, right now and for so long, people have been kind of left guessing, like, the entirety of Russia, you know, has been, yeah. like, there's this huge mystery, like, we still don't know what happened. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. I want to, like, see if they have any yeah, updates or, like, sure. what they're thinking is going on over there. Yeah, maybe yeah. we'll even do, like, an update episode if something yeah, happens. If anything so comes of it. Yeah. We'll get sure. the, the Yeti to make a guest <laughs> appearance. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a full interview coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. So that is the end of our podcast. We hope you guys liked it and um, we enjoyed listening. We're going to post ep- new episodes every two weeks, so stay tuned. Um, again, please follow us and leave us a positive review, a review or whatever, or sorry, on whatever platform you're listening. Um, and if you want more info on this episode, check out our website, which is darkmatterpod.com, and follow us on Instagram, which is at darkmatterpod. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye, guys.